Hi, everybody. My name is Sushmita Balachandar, and I'd like to welcome you all to this webinar on introduction to Abacus. Firstly, a brief introduction about myself. I've been a part of Exogenous Learning Systems for the past three years, and I take care of online content creation. So moving on, I'd like to say a few words about Exogenous Learning Systems before we get into the webinar. We started the company in the early 2000s, and since then, our main focus has been on education and business. We offer a variety of courses like Abacus, Vedic Max, Handwriting, and online business courses. Our mission has always been to promote education in the society and inspire young entrepreneurs. I'm proud to say that today, we have several franchisees all over India, the Middle East, and also other parts of the world. In this course, we're going to focus on Abacus and its applications. To give you some background, Abacus, AKA the counting frame, is one of the first counting devices ever invented. It's been in use since ancient times and still continues to be an important part of our lives. An Abacus basically consists of sliding beads along rods and grooves and helps in performing mathematical functions with ease. And what's really interesting is, most people think a Bacchus would be useful only for performing the basic functions like addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. But did you know that we can even find and calculate rules up to the cubic degree? Doesn't that sound exciting? Moving forward, I'd love to touch upon some of the benefits of a Bacchus. Firstly, it really helps the learner visualize numbers and perform mental calculations. Secondly, it teaches the basic number system, which allows the learner to play with and manipulate numbers. In terms of cognition, it's proven to improve memory, concentration, and brain development. It's also a great tool to develop self-confidence in children and get rid of the math phobia. I think the discussion about mental health has never been more important than in these times, and Abacus is known for alleviating stress. So here's how an Abacus looks. I know there's a lot of text on the slide, but I just want you to focus on a few things. There is a beam in the center and beads above and below it, fittingly called the upper and lower beads respectively. The second thing I want you to focus on is the designation of the units place, the tens place, and the hundreds place. As you can see, the first row from the right is the units place, the second is the tens place, and the third rod from the right is the hundreds place. This might be overwhelming right now, but I just want you to stay with me here and I promise things will get clearer once we start counting numbers and solving problems on the abacus. First, let's set some ground rules. You use your right hand thumb and index finger to move the beads on your right, and you use your left hand index and middle fingers to move the beads on your left. So there are some ABCDs of Abacus that I'm gonna deal with in the next few slides. Let's start with the fundamentals. So first, the home position. That's when the upper beads and lower beads are away from the beam or the center bar. Next, the top beads are called heaven beads and have a value of plus five when moved towards the center bar and minus five when moved away from it. The bottom beads are called earth beads. Each bottom bead has a value of one. Again, like we talked about before, if we move it towards the center bar, that's plus one. And if we move away from the center bar, that's minus one. And it's that simple. When it comes to bead movement, there are certain principles that you need to follow. So while using your left hand, keep in mind the following. Only your forefinger and middle finger must be used. 
Use your forefinger to move the lower beads and the upper beads upwards. Use your middle finger to move the lower beads and the upper beads downwards. Use both fingers to move both upper and lower beads simultaneously. So the general principle to keep in mind is that the forefinger moves beads upwards and middle finger moves beads downwards. When it comes to your right hand, only your thumb and forefinger must be used. Use your thumb to move the lower beads and the upper beads upwards. Use your forefinger to move the lower beads and the upper beads downwards. Use both fingers to move both upper and lower beads simultaneously. So thumb moves beads upwards and index finger moves beads downwards. Now let's get into the fun part. How do we count numbers on the abacus? Let's start with single digit numbers since it's the easiest. So first, the zero position where all the beads are at home position. Now, let's count one on the abacus. That's one lower bead on the unit's place moved towards the center bar. How do we count two? That's two lower beads on the unit's place moved towards the center bar. And so on for counting three and four. Now, let's count five. How do we do that? Simple, just move the upper bead in the unit's place towards the center bar. That gives us five. Now, six. It's time to combine what we learned. That is, to move the upper bead and one lower bead in the unit's place towards the center bar. And voila, we have six. And so on for counting seven, eight, and nine. Now, let's try counting double and triple digit numbers. First, let's start with 10. That's zero in the unit's place and one in the tenths place. So you basically have to move one lower bead in the tenths place towards the center bar and you'll arrive at 10. Now, let's try 20. Again, break it down to the numbers in the tenths and the unit's place, that is, two and zero respectively. So you have to move two lower beads in the tenths place towards the center bar and you'll arrive at 20 and so on and so forth for 30 and 40. For 50, you move the upper bead in the tenths place towards the center bar. Similarly, for 90, move the upper bead in the tenths place towards the center bar and four lower beads in the tens place towards the center. Next, let's try 79. I would suggest you pause the video for a minute and try to work it out on your own. So did you get it? Let me break it down for you. You need seven in the tens place and nine in the units place. So you have to move the upper and two lower beads in the tens place towards the center and move the upper and four lower beads in the unit's place towards the center to arrive at 79. I'm sure it'll be easy to count 99 if you follow the above steps. So let's move on to triple digit numbers. To count 100, move one lower bead in the hundreds place towards the center. For 500, move the upper bead in the hundreds place towards the center. For 306, move three lower beads in the hundreds place towards the center and one upper bead and one lower bead in the units place towards the center. So to break it down, that's three in the hundreds place, zero in the tens place, and six in the units place. Similarly, take a moment to try counting 978 and 999 on your abacus. So if you see the slide, you can check your answer. Now that we know how to count numbers on the abacus, let's move on to calculations. Naturally, we start with addition. Let's start with single digit numbers. All right, let's try the first problem, which is one plus two. Let's deal with one number at a time. So first, take the first number, which is one. To set one on your abacus, move one lower bead in the unit's place 
towards the center bar. Now, for two, move two lower beads in the unit's place towards the center bar. Now, take a look at your abacus and the number you have arrived at is your answer, which is three. Wasn't that simple? Now, let's try two plus two by repeating the same process. So to arrive at two, move two lower beads in the unit's place towards the center bar and repeat the process for the second number, which is two again. The number you have arrived at is the answer, which is four. Let's move on to addition of two digit numbers. So we have our first problem here, which is 55 plus 33. Now start with the first number, which is 55. To set 55 on your abacus, move the upper beads in the tens and units place towards the center bar. And for 33, move three lower beads in the tens and units place towards the center bar. Now count your result, that's 88. So I think by now you've gotten the hang of things. Now, I suggest you take a moment to try the next sum, which is 55 plus 24. At this point, feel free to pause the video. Did you get it? You're right if your abacus looks like this. So I've set 55. That's 24. And the result is your answer, which is 79. Now it's time to move on to subtraction. As always, we're going to start with single digits. Our first problem is four minus three. First, set four on your abacus by moving four beads in the unit's place towards the center bar. Now, this is where it gets tricky. In subtraction, instead of adding beads, we remove them. So, to take three away from four, we move three lower beads in the unit's place away from the center bar to the home position. What you're left with? is one bead in the unit's place, which is your answer. Now, try the next problem on your own to check your understanding. That's three minus one. Again, feel free to pause the video. If you're left with two beads in the unit's place, you have arrived at the correct answer and your abacus should look like this. Let's move on to double digit numbers. The first problem is 34 minus 22. First, set 34 on your abacus by moving three beads in the tens place and four beads in the units place towards the center bar. To take 22 away from 34, we move two lower beads in the tens place and two lower beads in the units place away from the center bar to the home position. What you're left with is one bead in the tens place and two beads in the units place, which is basically 12, and that's your answer. Now, here's your practice sum. That is 44 minus 31. Feel free to pause the video. So, you first set 44 on your abacus. Next, you take away 31. What you're left with is 13, which is your answer. Now, it's time to move on to multiplication. So before we start solving multiplication problems, let's familiarize ourselves with a few important terms. First, multiplicand. Multiplicand is the number to be multiplied and what you multiply it with is the multiplier. The number you get as a result of your multiplication is called the product. Just to make things clearer, let's look at an example. In this example, three into two is equal to six. Three is the multiplicand, two is the multiplier, and the product is zero six. 
Some of you may have noticed that in the example mentioned, the product is written as 06. I'll explain the reason behind it in the next slide. One of the most basic rules in Abacus to be followed when it comes to multiplication is that when you write the product, the number of digits in the product must be a sum of the number of digits in the multiplicand and multiplier. Now, let's look at an example. 3 into 2 is equal to 0, 06. In this example, 3 is the multiplicand, 2 is the multiplier, and 0, 06 is the product. So when we think about the thumb rule, the number of digits in the multiplicand is 1 and the number of digits in the multiplier is also one. So the number of digits in the product must be one plus one, which is two digits. Hence, we write the product as zero, six. Now, let's make it more clear. Let's take another example, which is 23 into two is equal to zero, four, six. Can you guys identify the multiplicand in this problem? Yes, it is 23. Next, look at the number of digits in 23, which is two. Now, can you identify the multiplier? Yes, it's two again. Now, look at the number of digits in the multiplier. That would be one. So based on what we just talked about in the previous slide, the number of digits in the product must be the sum of the digits in the multiplicand and multiplier. So in this example, that would be three. Although 23 into two is 46, in a Bacchus, it's good to get into the habit of representing it as 046 in keeping with the thumb rule. One final thing before we get into problem solving. Take a look at the slide. You have to number the rods starting from left to right. The first four rods, which is rods one through four, should be used to represent the multiplicand. Rods six through nine should be used to represent the multiplier. And rods 12 to 17 should be used to represent the product. For now, rods five, 10 and 11 are left empty. Let me give you a quick example on how you should approach a multiplication problem. Let's say you want to multiply 21 and 11. Step one is to identify what the multiplicand and multiplier is. In this case, 21 is the multiplicand and 11 is the multiplier. First, circle your multiplicand, which is 21. Next, take the first digit of your multiplier, which is one. Now, you have to multiply each digit of the multiplicand with the chosen digit from the multiplier. In this case, that would be two into one, followed by one into one. That would give us a result of two and one, respectively. Now, repeat the same process with the second digit of the multiplier. In this example, since the second digit is also one, you get the same results. So this is how you approach any multiplication problem. Now let's learn how to perform multiplication on the abacus. So the first step would be to set the multiplicand and the multiplier. Let's take the same example of 21 into 11. So the multiplicand here is 21, so you set that in the rods assigned for it. Repeat the same process with the multiplier, which is 11, and set it in the rods assigned for it. I just want to quickly jog your memory about the basic rule we learned in multiplication. That is, your product should always be the sum of the digits in the multiplicand and the multiplier. In this case, that would be two plus two, which is four. Now that you know you have to express the product in four digits, you have to start at the fourth rod from the right to arrive at the product on the abacus. Now, let's apply what we learned in the last slide. If you remember, the first step 
is to take the first digit of the multiplier, which is one, and multiply that with each digit of the multiplicand. So let's start with two into one. That would be zero, two. So you have to set that in the product rods. Like we discussed, since we have to start at the fourth rod from the right, we count zero on the fourth rod and two on the third rod. Next, you want to multiply the first digit of the multiplier with the next digit of the multiplicand. That is one into one, the answer of which would be zero one. You want to set that on the product rod, but the most important step is to start from where you left off on the previous step, which would be the third rod from the right. Count zero on the third rod and one on the second. Now that we're done with the first digit of the multiplier, let's remove that from the abacus on the multiplier rods. Now we are left with 21 into one. In keeping with the thumb rule, we have to represent the product on the third rod from the right. Repeat steps two and three and set it in the product rods as shown in the animation. Now we have to answer 21 into 11 as 0, 2, 3, 1. Again, don't forget to represent the product as a sum of the digits in the multiplicand and multiplier. We are done with multiplication. Pat yourselves on the back. Let's move on to the last function, division. Some basic terms used in division are dividend, divisor, quotient, and remainder. Let me explain all these terms with an example. Let's take six divided by two. We all know the answer to that is three. Please take a look at the slide. The number that is getting divided is called the dividend, which would be six in this example. The number which divides a given number is called the divisor, which would be two in this example. And the number we get as a result of that would be the quotient, which would be three in this example. The number that is left after the division is called the remainder, which would be zero in this case. Similar to multiplication, let's look at how we have to work with the ab abacus for division. Rods one to four are for counting the dividend or remainder. Six to 14 for the quotient, 15 to 17, the divisor. Now that we know the basics, let's try a problem on the abacus. Firstly, we have 32 divided by two. In this example, 32 is the dividend and two is the divisor. So let's start by setting these on the abacus. So that's 32. And that's two. Next, we have to divide the first digit of the dividend with the divisor, which would be three divided by two. Since it would go one time, set one in the quotient rod of the abacus. Now that we have the dividend, divisor, and the quotient on the abacus, we only have the remainder left. In this example, the remainder would be three minus two, which is one, and set that in the dividend slash remainder rods by removing two beads as seen in the animation. Now we are left with 12 as a dividend and two as a divisor. Repeat the above steps. We would have six as the quotient in this case. And set that in the quotient rod from where we left off previously. Similarly, to determine the remainder, we need to subtract 12 from the dividend, which is also 12, and hence we get zero, which should be set on the dividend slash remainder rods. Now we have the answer to 32 divided by two, which is 16 as seen on the quotient rods. Hooray!
We're done with all the basic mathematical functions on the abacus. I realize how this may have been a lot of information, but trust me, with practice, most of this can be done intuitively and with ease. Beyond the classroom, practicing every day is essential as it helps in developing speed and also improves the confidence level in children. Daily practice also stimulates the nerves in the brain and aids in cognitive development. Besides the tutor, the role of parents is of key importance. Parental monitoring may be needed as 10 minutes per day of home practice is very, very important. Parents can keep track of their children's weekly progress or problems and can reach out to the tutor at any time. Registration and enrollment. In case of franchise registration, there is a one-time payment of rupees 50,000 with no royalties required. The agreement is valid for a period of five years, following which it would be auto-renewed. There is also provision for training support through webinars. Student enrollment. Each level has a subscription fee of rupees 1,000 per student, which is valid for a period of six months. Following the subscription, each student will be provided with unlimited practice sums on the online portal, a 17 rod abacus, a bag and a t-shirt with the Extra Genius logo, and a free one-time online exam registration for which the usual fee is rupees 500. We've come to the end of this webinar and I hope it was insightful, enjoyable and informative. This is just the beginning of a series of webinars delving deeper into Abacus and we would love for you to be a part of this journey. We're also on Facebook and Instagram, so please follow us to get the latest updates and offers. Looking forward to meeting you in the next webinar. Thank you.